This Christmas is not just another repeat of Christmas. And the song that calls us to be faithful, we want to be found, be faithful in telling the story of Christmas. Christmas is not to be celebrated just any old way. It's not about how you celebrate Christmas. It's not how you feel about Christmas. Christmas is one of the greatest stories that has ever been given to us. And it's not just a mere story to be told to children before they go to bed. It's not a story to be said on Christmas Day. It is a story that is based on a true account of a Savior that has been given to us. And we have the marvelous responsibility, the opportunity, the the joy of being able to share Christ this Christmas. And we want to be faithful That no matter the circumstances we are found in, no matter the fears or the realities uh, of even the dangers like those shepherds very well faced in declaring what they had seen and of a king that had been born and the threats that could have come from Herod for speaking such words in their day. We want to set aside the fears and the things that would cause us just to kind of go through the motions or even to just kind of sit back and just see what might happen this Christmas. We don't want to live there. We want to push past those things and decide that this Christmas is going to be a Christmas, that I want to share Christ more than I ever have before. I want to be more bold uh, in sharing this uh, message of Christ came to earth for my neighbors, for my family, for my city, for the world. I want to get that message out this Christmas. I want to be faithful to that. What a joy we have in knowing it. What an opportunity we have this season to be able to share this message. I'd like to read that passage in Luke 2, verse number 8, of the shepherds, of what they saw that night, of what Scripture has given to us as a true account that took place, of what they witnessed in order that we can know what they saw, what they beheld on that night when Christ was born. We want to this season behold this message and the Messiah that these shepherds saw on that time when Christ was born. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 8, it says, And there were in the same country, that country where Christ was born in Bethlehem, these shepherds that were abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Oh, we have a message that came from angels to lowly shepherds, and a message that has now come to the world. And it is the message of this season that we seek to share. Uh, And I find it interesting that when this message came from angels to these lowly shepherds watching over their flock by night, that it was not a a command to go and find and and see the child. It was not a, uh, that they were to immediately uh, take action. It was more of an invitation that the scripture says that Uh, a sign would be given to them and that this sign would be that they would find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. That if they would go and seek, they would find. And it's the invitation that is still given to all today. Much like it says in, in the book of Psalms, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is that man. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. God invites all, come and taste, come and see, come and find the the, the wonders and and the glory and the salvation that God has for all of mankind today. Matthew 7, Jesus gives us this promise, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. 
For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. You know, kids are going to open Christmas presents this Christmas. Gifts are going to be given and the wrapping taken off and we're going to receive gifts that have received some thought and some uh, love put into them. And we're going to receive some good gifts. But Jesus Christ knows how to give much better gifts than any that a mom or a dad or a loved one could give to another this Christmas. He gives us the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. He gives us the gifts of joy and peace and of faith and long-suffering in this Christmas season, things that outlast the things that we may give to one another in this Christmas season. And he says, if we know how to give good gifts, how much greater does the Father in heaven know how to give gifts unto you? And so he invites you, ask, what is your need? You, you shall have it. On many a time I have claimed the promise in my life, God, you have said if I will seek you, if I will seek my need that is found in you, you promised I will find it. It's not maybe you'll find God, maybe you'll, you'll find the need that you need in your life that only God can supply. No, he promises that if you look for your need found in him, it will be supplied. you believe that this morning? You believe that in this season of life that we are in? Claim those promises. Don't miss out on the invitation, the message that has been given. These shepherds, they didn't miss out on the good news. You know, so many uh, that the angels could have come to. They could have gone to those that could have heard the message and and put the message into print and and cause it to go out through all the world. He could have came and he uh, could have made himself known to men of great eloquence and speech and they could have been sent out with great oratory skills to be able to spread to all the nations this message of hope. But he came to shepherds, just common men doing their common jobs in common places, places really that were uh, Bethlehem being kind of uh, hidden by the, uh, the, uh, the glory of Jerusalem, just a small place. He came to these average common people, gave them the greatest message men have ever heard, that a Savior has come, and he's been born in your midst. And those shepherds went out and just told what they had heard and what they had seen. It's still the same today. The message still comes to those who are just common, ordinary folk. He's not asking you to, with great literary skill or great oratory speech necessarily, to be able to publish the message, but just in your ability, share what you have heard and what you have seen God do in your life. Share it with others. Share it this Christmas season. That was the result of these shepherds in what they saw. They didn't miss the significance of, of the message. Back in 1903, uh, in the December of 1903, the Wright brothers were working at uh, this quest of flight. And they had achieved in that month the ability to be able to fly for the first time, to get their, uh, their machine off the ground, and they flew for 120 feet that December. And they were so filled with excitement that they wrote to their sister Catherine and and sent her uh, a telegram telling her that we have flown, we did it, and we'll be home for Christmas. She was so excited by the news that was given that she ran immediately to uh, the publisher in town, the editor, and gave him the message that they had flown and they'd be home for Christmas. And his response simply was that, Oh, that's wonderful. Your brothers will be home for Christmas. And he completely missed that men had flown for the very first time. <clears throat> we don't want to miss the joy of this season, the message that is given to us, that there can be peace on earth, that there is glory in the highest because Christ was born for us. To know that joy, to experience it, to hear it, and to know it personally in our lives, and as a result, go out without fear, without uh, a cause of uncertainties, to, to let those things go and share Christ in this season where we are, where God has placed us today. God's invitation to these shepherds here 
it resulted in them having a call to go and tell what they had seen. I want you to notice of these shepherds here that the shepherds were called to be a beacon. Then in verse 9 here, it is the Lord who has sent angels with a message. And it's the angel of the Lord that came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Can you imagine the glory of the Lord, his majesty, his holiness, his wonder, the glory of the Lord in in the coming of this angel before these shepherds and it's shining around them, them knowing that presence of this messenger from heaven, them knowing the greatness of God in the midst of this angel standing before them. God's message has come from an angel and come to these shepherds that are just here abiding in the fields of Bethlehem in the, in the countryside. They're there watching their flocks by night. In verse 10, it says that the angel said to these, said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Can you imagine what this meant for these men, uh, for their families, for the uncertainties and fears of, theirs, of their day, how this brought a joy and a peace, a calm to them, knowing that God is doing something in our day, and not just in our day, but he's doing something in our place where we live, in our little place of often forgotten little Bethlehem. God is doing something here, how, what that must have meant for them personally, their homes, their living, where they were. But the message wasn't just from angels and then two shepherds, the message went then from the shepherds for all the world. Verse 10 says that the good tidings of great joy were not just to them, but it says, which shall be to all people. And the conclusion of this account in verse 17, it says, when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. It was no longer angels going about telling the message No, it was just common, ordinary people, these lowly shepherds, going about telling other shepherds, telling other common people of Bethlehem, telling all that they probably ever came in contact with for the rest of their lives of what they had seen, the message they heard, and how it was true there in their little place of Bethlehem. You see, God has a great message for all the world to hear. And many of the world and especially of us here in North America, have heard the message. But it's something different to hear and then another thing to respond to what we hear. All hear, but not all respond. And this Christmas, God has a message for you and I and how we need to seek and desire to God, what is it this Christmas season that you would have me do? What is it this Christmas season that you would show me and it caused me to understand that would become very personal and real in my life that would give me such a courage and a, and a boldness and a love for others to go and share what you are doing in my life, to share what you have of your grace of salvation coming into my life and having a boldness to share that with others this Christmas season. God used these shepherds to become a beacon of light and hope in their little place of Bethlehem. God gives a call for people to hear his message and then to go out with that message. We even see the example of this when Jesus called his disciples, in particular of Matthew, when Jesus saw him there, it says, Jesus passed forth from thence and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom and he said unto him, follow me. And Matthew didn't just hear the message, he didn't just hear the words, He responded to those words, and he arose and followed him. Jesus has a a message for you to share this Christmas. Jesus has a work in your heart that he wants to do this Christmas. And if you and I, like Matthew, will be willing to hear those words and follow them, there will be great blessing that will come into our lives as a result. God can use us in a great way if we're willing to tune our hearts in this way To all God's sheep, he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
oh, this Christmas season, may we be a people that want to follow the words of Jesus. We want to know the Christmas story and we want to share it with others. We want to know the true account of how Christ came to earth and was born in a manger and to share that with others this Christmas season. How we want to be reminded of it anew and afresh and for Christmas to have a real true meaning in our hearts this Christmas. Not just to go and see what will happen this Christmas, but to know that God is working in our place, in our lifetime, in our hearts, and to be in tune with that. God, do your work in us through this season and cause us to be a beacon of hope today. Someone gave the illustration of the church being something similar to if a great doctor, renowned amongst doctors, a doctor of doctors, were to, uh, in our day, find the cure for cancer. How great a message of hope that would be and how great a remedy that doctors could bring to this crisis that comes into our lives. But just having the cure and having that message is not enough. That message must get out. There are other doctors that need to know about the cure and they need to know how to administer it. They know, need to know how to give it to help others. They, they need to be trained in, in, in how to uh, give that cure. And, and in much the same way that the great doctor, the great physician that the church has is Jesus Christ. He has the great message that needs to be shared, and he has a cure for a disease greater than that of cancer. The disease, the, 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 the state of being lost in sin, of being bound and shackled by sin. And he has given for us, his church, his body, to know that message and to know that cure and has given us with the commission to go and tell others that they can hear the, the, the glory of the highest, the greatest of all messages, to not tell them not just the good news, but to be able to tell them how to apply that news to their lives to be saved, to, to have uh, encouragement this season, that God is with us this season as well. And he's working in this season also. Well, he used the shepherds and, uh, to be a beacon of hope, and he used them in the region that they were. Now, this is an encouraging truth uh, in this passage here of how God used them where they were. In this place, this, this often uh, little and forgotten place of Bethlehem, it says in verse 15 that after the angels had uh, given praise to God and declared peace on earth and goodwill toward men, that it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And it says, And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now God did something marvelous in little Bethlehem. And it wasn't by mistake. It wasn't by chance that this happened. It was long ago foretold by the prophet Micah that of Bethlehem Ephrathah, that though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come, great, shall come forth un, uh, unto thee, that is, to rule in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Did you know that before Canada was ever a nation, before the earth was ever made and formed, the foundations being put forth, God determined, knowing that man would fall away from his holiness, that he would ordain a place, a place called Bethlehem, in which he would bring the miracle of salvation. It was not by chance the shepherds happened to be in this place. It was not a mistake that they were the ones that were in the field. That It wasn't a mistake that the angel came to them in that place. It wasn't someone else that was supposed to be there. They were supposed to be in that place, and it was supposed to be in Bethlehem that Jesus would be born. It is not a mistake that you live, and it is not a mistake that you have breath in your lungs and you're living today. No matter your circumstances, no matter what kind of life that you have lived, you are not a mistake. God has fearfully and wonderfully crafted and made you, and he has 
allowed you to live and to, and to breathe and to, and to have your being where you live. And he's seeking to use you where you live. He's seeking to do a work, not just in your heart, but in the hearts of those that are around you. And he wants to use you and I to impact the lives of others because of his life in us and flowing through us to touch the lives of others this Christmas season. <coughs> These shepherds, they are not by chance. Not by chance. It, 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 it's interesting in studying some of the uh, some of the practices back in the time of this era of the worship that took place in the temple, of the, the practice of the Jewish people uh, in their land uh, uh, of Judea, how that many times the temple had those uh, flocks that there were their own private flocks that they owned. And they would have these, uh, these sheep and these lambs uh, readily available to them because there were the ongoing sacrifices that took place in the temple. It's very possible that Bethlehem, just being a short distance from Jerusalem, that these shepherds may have been shepherds that took care of these lambs that would be given for sacrifice in the temple. It's very possible but that what they were overlooking was the Lord's work in that someone needed to care for the sheep and, and some needed to take care that there were those that were, th- were without blemish, that were prepared and ready to be used in the temple offerings and sacrifices. That these ha- were sh- shepherds that had a care for the things of God, ha- had a desire for God uh, to be glorified in their lives. And God used that care and God can use that desire in a much greater way if we'll seek and look and desire to find from him. That these shepherds perhaps were ones that knew not just the lambs that would be sacrificed in the temple, but they themselves saw the Lamb of God that would be sacrificed to take away their sin and the sins of the whole world. God did a very special work specifically there in Bethlehem, specifically with these shepherds, and he wants to do specifically a work in our lives this Christmas season. It is in a region here, and it's also for a season. These shepherds, they had the opportunity to go and see of this sign of this child being born in a manger. They needed to act in their day, in their time, and for their lifetime, they had the opportunity to share what they had witnessed. The experience that they had, the message that they heard, it was their opportunity to share. It goes on in the account here that in verse 17, when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. They told others of what happened that night. And I can't help but think that for the rest of their lives, there were many times that they took perhaps children and grandchildren in their homes, took them aside and shared with them what happened. That there were times that they took people aside in in Bethlehem and in the places that they lived in the hillside of Judea and told them what they had witnessed. It was their opportunity, a chosen group of shepherds, to be able to witness of what they had seen. And all those that they told, it says in verse 18, that when all they that heard it, they wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. There's something greater to wonder about this Christmas than all the fancy lights in the downtown. There's something more wondrous to behold and to be excited about than all the parties and festivities that people will hold. The greatest wonder of Christmas is that Jesus was born and that he was born to die for us. And if there's not a people that's making much of Jesus in this season, who is? Who's going to make much of Jesus? Who's going to point others to the truth that Christmas is about a baby that was laid in a manger that would live a a perfect and sinless life to one day be nailed upon a cross to be laid into a tomb for us that he might rise again, bringing everlasting peace and salvation. This is a season for us to take grasp of. Don't let it pass you by idly. Don't wait for Christmas to happen. This year, make Christmas happen for others. Cause others to know what Christmas is all about. Make a matter of prayer of, Lord, 
who can I share the message of Christmas with? How can I make a difference in the lives of my neighbors and friends this year? How can I share it perhaps in a new way or what can I do in a new way to try and reach those who have already tried to reach? Purpose, God, I'm available. I want you to use me in this way to cause Christmas to happen for others in this season, this season of life that you find yourself. This was something that was given to the shepherds to be able to do in their day. This is something that we can repeat even today. Not idly, but with a commitment and a determination to make Christmas happen for others. I want you to notice, lastly, the shepherds were called for a reason. You know, we, we make much of getting the gospel out. We make much of not just seeking to uh, and desiring for our area to be saturated with the gospel, but we make much of getting the gospel out into all the world. But in our efforts and, and in the times that we see uh, uh, the ability to be able to get the gospel out, that's not the end result. That's not the end purpose of our lives. The greatest, the greatest task of our life is, is not just to get the gospel out. It's not just to share the message. It's, it's not just to uh, seek to lead another soul to the Lord, though those things are, ought to be things that we're doing daily in our lives and striving for. The greatest purpose of our lives is the very same of what God desired to do in the lives of these shepherds and them going out, witnessing what was told them, and they saw come true. The end result, and for the rest of their lives, I believe in this passage here, is when we see the, the last few words that's spoken of them in verse 20, when it says the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. They spent their lives glorifying God praising God. And one of the greatest opportunities that we have to glorify and praise God is in our witness. But if that glorifying and praising God does not begin in the heart, if it does not begin in our souls of knowing how the message and, and how Christ has changed our lives personally, if we go out sharing a message in our own power and strength and not in seeking to bring glory and praise to God, we have missed it. We have missed the purpose. We have missed of the work that God wants to do in our lives. We need a God of the possible to be able to do the impossible of sharing a message and the sharing of Christ. If it does not come from a heart of seeking to glorify God, praising God, you know, this season is a season for from our hearts. It's not just to get the message out, but this is a season for us to genuinely from our hearts have a song that we want to sing to the Lord out of worship to have something to speak of our God and just bring glory and praise to him. That with friends and neighbors and loved ones, to be able to, when we gather around and we talk about uh, the joy of this season, there's something in my heart I want to praise God for this Christmas season. Man, I encourage you that uh, you would strive and desire that through this season, it, 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 whatever circumstances you may find yourself in, that you would seek after God, claiming the promise that you will find your heart's need and that he would put within your heart a, a theme of praise in some aspect of your life to be able to just be thankful and filled with gratitude to God for. At the end of the day, uh, the way that we live our, our lives, the, the way that we witness our ability to witness, uh, uh, our ability to be able to serve God, it changes from season to season. Things that we have done in the past are not always things we're able to do in the future. But every life is able to continue to live from a place where it has a worship of God at its heart. Where it has a, a, a desire to praise God in, in public, in front of others, with family, with friends. Has a desire to, to lift one's voice and to sing and, and to shout of God's goodness. But that only happens if it's genuine, if it's true in the heart. It can only happen in every season of life. If God is, if you're allowing God to do that work in your heart and in your life in this season. God wants to hear praise and glory from your lips. Psalms 147 says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praise is calmly. 
God wants to hear you praise him as you visit with others. He wants you to hear him, you praise him when life is difficult, when life is boring, when life is mundane, when life is going well. He wants to hear praise from your lips. He wants there to be worship and glory in your heart towards the Lord. And if you will do this, whatever season you find yourself, if you find yourself in a place of praising and glorifying God from your heart, the message will go out. The message will get out. It'll get out to loved ones and neighbors. It will go because you can't help but speak the things because you have tasted and you have seen and you have found the goodness of God in your life. Seek him and he shall be found. Know him this Christmas season and make him known to others in this day.